And away we go. Welcome in, everybody. It's time again. Episode 478 of Three Guys Before the Game. And we got a good one. We got, got, got like a really quadruple good, you think? Quintuple good. Picked you a good one. Picked you As a good Coach one. Stu said. <laughs> yeah, Picked pick, you a good one. Picked you a good one. Yahoo's Dan Wetzel is our special guest on Three Guys Before the Game, which is brought to us by the Burdett Camping Center. They happen to be the only, only warranty forever dealer in the state of West Virginia. Visit them at BurdettCamping.com. By GoMart, go for GoMart. You go for good times. Go for GoMart.com. Get your rewards card and get money savings off of fuel and the great food items they have there like a nine pound Reese cup and a 32 foot fly rod slim jim you name it give, they got give or take. got a moon pie in there too and a barrel of mountain dew you get your rewards card <laughs> and it's good to go and some pork rinds pork rinds of course three guys also brought to us by comax business systems keeping west virginia's business data safe secure efficient for 25 years and by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. They sell family fun. Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com. All right, let's just jump right in. Um, our guest our guest coming up here, Dan Wetzel of Yahoo, um, has he, uh, unintentionally, he has made people um, for the last several years think that I might be a little bit off. Why you say that? You might be? I might be a little off. Because I listen to his podcast, College Football Inquirer, uh, while I walk my dog in the morning. And what happens is I'll be walking, so it's kind of like the rail, oftentimes on the rail trail, and I'll laugh out loud. And so people like, I'm walking my dog, and I'll just say, ha, ha, ha. Like, like multiple times, people have kind of looked at me, they give you that eye. Like, what the hell's the matter with that? Do you guy? acknowledge, like, point to your headphones or nah, anything? No, I just, just kind of keep, 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 keep on going. He's a nutty guy. I already think you're off anyway. So it's, your, matter. it's your fault, Wetzel. I just told you. I mean, you're I'm the sure car. that's the only, the only transgression in your neighborhood <laughs> that makes people look at. Great. So point. I apologize. Because otherwise, you are a picture of normalcy uh, yeah. and uh, good neighborly behavior, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. So, Dan, I, I think the last time we had you on was when Death to the BCS came out and um it was a, a fantastic piece looking into the the bowl industry which has obviously changed uh in large part at least the format of it i think there's probably still obviously a lot of side deals and links and things like that and i mean i was looking at your bio here just to kind of put a little perspective man Man, young man, you've done well. Young man, you you've you've done pretty well for yourself there. Uh, glory, well, I'm glory not sure about young. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not that old. So, like, I was also doing that. So, you're a UMass grad. So, like, when you John Calipari was into the midst of getting the thing going right when you were an undergrad. Fair. Yeah, I was. Uh, I covered the team. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the video where Cheney tries to kill him. <laughs> you? Oh, you were there that day? <laughs> oh yeah, classic. I think that's why I became a sports writer. I'm like, this is fantastic. <laughs> After these good games, the coaches try to strangle each other. I got to do this. They yeah, see, like, um, oh, boy. yeah, I'm, I'm there. I stand up. I'm, I stand up and get in the way. I'm and I'm like. I make no effort to, like, break up the fight. I'm like, let's go. Let's, let's go. I, I didn't know what an octagon was at the time, or you know, but I, I would have helped construct one if we could have had it. Did it, did, it um, change the lead for, yeah. did it change the lead for your story? I, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the game yeah. didn't really matter too much yeah. after that. Yeah. It was, it was funny because that was before Twitter. There was no, like, live internet broadcasts of press conferences. Like, this is 90, like, four maybe, something like that. And um, so it was just sort of this uh, this thing happened, and, like, nobody knew it happened except everyone who was there. I mean, there was video, obviously, but that wasn't going to get played until, like, the 6 o'clock news. Yeah. yeah. Now, like, instantaneously, it would be everywhere. Yeah. It, it ended, and I remember everyone staring there looking at each other like, did that just happen? <laughs> did, like, did John Cheney just come in and say, I'm going to kill you? <laughs> like, you know, and we're all we're like, can we rewatch? What do you got? Like local, there was like a couple local news stations there. Like it wasn't. And we're like, I, I cannot believe what I just saw. So it was, uh, yeah. So I was there. Yeah. John Calipari. Hey, Watched so, a lot of WVU teams play oh, up in uh, Amherst. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great games. 
Yeah. Great games, great teams. Yeah, Gail Catlett, everything. Yeah, so he, I mean, he, he turned the entire thing. Because, you know, Curry Hicks cage at that. I mean, it was the track. There were cinders. It was dusty. It yeah. was dirty. And he just, like, he revolutionized everything in that league. And as a result of that, everyone hated him, as far as the coaches go, because he just came in and did everything different. And all of a sudden, the team they thought they were going to get two wins against every year turned that whole thing around. And he could also probably make the point that, you know, John was a futurist in the NIL business and, <laughs> and, and that, that, that's what it was and that's what it took. So anyway, um, let's jump alleged. in. Alleged. Alleged. With all due respect, allegedly. So man, I was thinking of you on this a week ago, Friday and everything imploded and you guys have followed this so closely through the years, but despite the fact of all the, hey, this might happen and this might happen and this might happen, it actually did happen. We saw the absolute implosion of the Pac-12. When it actually happened, did you have any surprise at all? Did you have that moment where you said, my goodness, this is actually happening, or had you come to terms with it? No, I I mean, I think even though you know it could happen when you watch a a 108-year-old conference, basically, you know, and I don't know if anyone's seen the movie Oppenheimer, but I think it's sort of like they they built the atomic bomb and then they sort of like, but wait, we built this thing. Wait, you're going to use it? And it's like, you know, there there was still that that stunningness. So it's just like, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. And why are we doing it? And like the Pac-12 is really going to go away? And it's been like this, it's been a slow steps where all of a sudden you sit there and go, oh, all right, Oregon and the big 10 kind of makes sense. And it's like, no, it doesn't, but it does. And that's where we're at. It, it was su- somewhat surprising. Uh, I think I broke the original story. The big 10 was looking at these at Oregon and Washington and maybe even Cal and Stanford. And it was like, wow, I, I like, what are we doing? And you, you really think about a lot of the big 10 schools. Like, why do you even want these schools? You already are the richest conference. Um, you know, why? What, what, what do these schools really add? And at this point, it's almost like a land grab and, like, fear has overtaken everything where everyone's just grabbing stuff, whether it, it has a, a good consequence or not. Like, you understand why the SEC says, hey, we want Oklahoma and Texas. They fit in our grouping. They're huge schools and huge programs. When the Big Ten now has four West Coast teams, you just go, man, TV is just running everything. And why is the conference, why are these presidents going along with it? Well, you just hit it right there, TV running everything. You had, you guys had a great quote from Scott Barnes, the Oregon State Athletic Director, in one of your recent articles, and, and I'll read that real quick. It says he, he is quoted, Scott Barnes is, as saying he's furious. He said conference realignment just doesn't make sense anymore. What this enterprise was built on was regionality and rivalries. That's gone. That's leaving the Pac-12. Some of the most special pieces about our model is the regionality of competition and rivalries. Those things are forgotten. And we've certainly seen that here with Pitt going Mm -hmm. off the schedule, the the 100 years of a tradition against Syracuse. All those have gone away. We've seen that. Dan, what's amazing to me, though, is we do all these shows. You talk to all these people around the sport, and they echo what Barnes said. Even current administrators echo what Barnes said but they can't help themselves from chasing those extra millions. Do we ever get back to the regionality part of this? Uh, unlikely. Um, this is TV. So Fox in particular, but Fox, ESPN, CBS, they're sitting there saying, okay, how do we get as many games to have the highest ratings as possible? And this isn't different than even five to ten years ago. Everything is about getting big number games. There was like 800 FBS football games last year. Only five through an audience of over 10 million. And only 22, counting those five and then 17 others, did, a, did a, uh, an audience of over five. And that's when TV is making money. They're really making money. Five, you know, Ohio State, Michigan, 17 million people watched. That's, that's, that's what's driving this. All they care about is how many games can we get that are over 5 million and over 10 million or whatever number they want to come up with. But it's a very small amount right now. These networks are increasingly under huge pressure for sports to deliver. It's not just the status quo is good. Hey, we make a good money on sports. We need to make more because no one's watching Fox's 
prime time shows, right? Um, Fox's cable, you know, Fox News, all those you are cutting the cord. The, the, the profits there are dwindling. Everything's dwindling, so there's just huge pressure on sports to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you're Fox, you're ESPN, whatever, you're sitting there saying, I need as many huge matchups as I can get. I need Texas. I can't have Texas playing Iowa State because Texas, Texas, Iowa State or Texas, West Virginia is going to get me $1.8 million. If I got Texas playing LSU, I'm going to get $6 million. And that's where I make my money. So everything is about getting as many brands in as possible. So what happened with the Pac-12, nobody wanted the Pac-12. They wanted four schools in the Pac-12. They really wanted three. But USC, Oregon, and Washington are a TV draw. Nobody else out there is. UCLA had to come along. What the Big Ten and what Fox, which runs the Big Ten, did was they went, instead of having to pay for all 12 schools in the Pac-12, they basically just by destabilizing and having this all go down, they pluck the four they want, and then they're putting them up against the Big Ten thing. So they don't care that there's an 18-team league. They don't care that Iowa and Illinois might play you know, less often. They don't care if the softball team has to fly all over the country. They care about when we get USC and Ohio State, we're going to get 11 million viewers. We get Oregon, even Oregon playing Penn State, we're going to get – 5.5, like that's all they care about. How many brands can we get in? And that's it. So when that's the driver, nothing else matters. And so they sit there and go, ah, sorry, Washington State. Sorry, softball team. Sorry if, you, you know, one of the things you have is like, let's say you're in, you're, you live in, uh, the, you know, uh, suburbs of Chicago and you're an Illinois alum and your neighbor's an Indiana alum and every year the two teams play, it's kind of fun. Well, you might play every three, four years now. Tough break. We don't care. So the people running the sport, and it's TV, don't care about the things that you, I, most, I would imagine most of the listeners here care about. And I don't know how in the world you get, in the, in the end, money always wins out, and the money is on their side, not on our side. All right, fair so, I mean, I'm not 100% against it, but you know what I'm saying. Fair, okay, fair enough. So then that begs the very next question, then at what point do we move along with, all right, consolidation already happened and Washington State and Oregon State are left out. When do we get to further consolidation where you're looking across the table at Vanderbilt and saying, why are you getting $85 million? If it's all about big matchups, when does someone get booted from an existing league? I don't know, but th- it would be extremely naive to think it doesn't happen. I agree. And I've been saying this for a long time. Like, consider the Big Ten – they added uh, Rutgers and Maryland because – why? Not because they had great athletic departments, although Maryland was pretty good in basketball and some stuff. But um, they did it because they would back whatever many years ago this was, 10 years ago, they could jam the Big Ten network onto basic cable subscription and get a dollar twenty-five from every house or whatever the number is from every house in New Jersey and Maryland. And that was going to make so much money that it was worth adding these two programs. Well, as basic cable becomes less and less of a thing, and, you know, the people get rid of it every year, and we all know cord cutting and all that stuff, you wonder when they're sitting around going, what do you do here? Like, what's your job? We had, your job was to get us money. Now you're getting us less money. People aren't buying the, the Big Ten network anymore. What do you do? You're, we can beat you. That's like one thing, but nobody really wants to watch Maryland or Rutgers in the numbers that we need. And so you wonder at what point do they say, look, we're throwing you out. We brought you in. You were useful for a while. We're throwing you out. Now, there is enormous number of contracts and research, uh, especially in the Big Ten, like, you know, research projects that, you know, interconnect all the schools and, 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 and different things. And they may still sit there and say, it's worth it for, Michigan and Ohio State to, to be involved in New Jersey because we get X number of students from there. So there's, there's more to it than that, but it'd certainly be completely naive for any team in any conference to sit around and go, oh, we're good. Yeah, Ohio State's good. Ohio State and Michigan aren't going to break up, right? But everybody else, you know, Alabama's pretty good, good shape. Everybody else, I don't know. And that's that will be the true Armageddon if they ever get to that point. But 
man, we're, we're, it's stages of Armageddon. And if you're Oregon State or Washington State right now, you know, it hit. Or Cal and Stanford, it hit. Totally agree. Did I say with all due respect before I said Vanderbilt? Uh, I don't think I meant you did. To. You want to with say that now. With all due respect, yeah. Vanderbilt. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. There you go. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, go ahead. You know, Dan, I wonder, though, if there's not going to be an inflection point. Because, as you say, all television cares about is the attractions and the eyeballs. Okay, but that also has some limitations because you're ruling out uh, a great number of schools, a great number of colleges and universities. How long before members of Congress say, you know what, hang on a second. We're going to call these executives before and we're going to have a hearing and say, what's going on here? Because the school in my state or the school I went to now is getting shut out. Do you ever see that happening? Well, you know, this would be something that you would think, could happen certainly congress loves but would they act i don't know it's i anytime you're counting on congress to do anything i you know uh, good luck um we like even you take oregon oregon is making a move to the big 10 they're literally leaving behind oregon state and oregon state just like they just redid their stadium for a couple hundred million they, they, they're going to have their television revenue go from like $30 million to $4 million. Like they're in enormous debt problems. They're going to have to have the Oregon State University is going to have to bail out their athletic department, presumably, if this, however this plays out. So that's real money. You might have to hit students up harder. You may have to – you're taking money from something else. And yet the politicians in Oregon are not saying, you, wait, hold on. Oregon, you've got to help out Oregon State. But that isn't so sustainable. Seeing, I don't see how that's sustainable, that all these schools get left behind and have these financial problems, and I don't see how that just goes like, well, okay, well, t- TV said so. I don't know, so. but if a, if a private business wants to make, make a move, can Congress really stop it? Now, I know that public schools, a lot of them, I don't know. I, I, think, I think you're right. But I just, I just don't know. I, I, you have a very good point. I don't need to, and I'm not 100 percent sure that you're not correct. I just, I just, I just wonder if, if it would get to that point. Here is one thing I would say about conference play, or this, this idea that one day we'd only have 40 teams playing college football and they'd all play each other, right? Because that is TV's ideal. It's the NFL. Mahomes versus Burrow this week, and then it's next week. Josh Allen. You know, you know every team. You know everybody. Everybody watches all the games. But college football needs weaker teams for the power conferences, the power teams to beat up on. Nobody wants to play a, a meat grinder like the NFL because it's not set up that way. Right. And part of the appeal is why, you know, why, does Ohio, why can Ohio State just fill their stadium every single week? Because every year for 100 years, basically, they've won 10, or 10 games. Like, it's a tradition of winning. We need to win. That's what builds us up. And eventually, if you're only playing each other, like the NFL, someone's going, you know, 2 and and 14, 2 and 15. And you go, gosh, I mean, we're we're a disaster. We fall apart. And you go, okay, but here's what we do. We make sure we build you back up because you get the number one pick. You're Jacksonville. You stink for two years. Well, you got Trevor Lawrence. Now you win a playoff game. In college football, unless you're going to do a draft, which seems impossible, and I, I mean, that'd just be horrific. Recruiting's part of the fun. The best players, the Trevor Lawrence just lines up to go to the 11 win team, right? He doesn't ever want to go to the one. They don't sign with, nobody signs with Vanderbilt. Trevor Lawrence doesn't sit there as a high school recruit and go, I can go to Clemson or I can go to Georgia Tech, right? I'm going to get, oh, I think I'll pick the last place team. Nobody does that. So you would end up stacking up in the wrong way where it's like you'd have, you'd have schools with, that are winning two games forever and then they have no fans and it'd just be a disaster. So there's more to it at play that can counteract just TV money, but I don't know. TV money is a powerful thing. The Big Ten didn't need any more money. I don't even know if they're making any more money off of Oregon and Washington. They're just grabbing them because maybe they'll make more money later. That's what's really a little terrifying. I'm not even sure this works on the bottom line. And I have no idea why the middle of the Big Ten, say a Michigan State or Purdue, 
why do you grab two schools? You're adding four schools, right, from the Pac-12. Mm-hmm. At least three of them have better programs than you. That's three more teams like you have to climb over just to get to the point where you then have to try to climb over Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan. Like, why do you want these teams? I wouldn't want three new tough teams. I'd want some teams that, hey, give me some hope. No, it's absolutely well said. So along that line, it always is the money. We've seen that. Now the next question, the next generation of this, as we move toward uh, the maturity, so to speak, or the continued evolution of NIL, how far away do you think or do you think we ever get to some form of student-athletes, quotation marks, being employees of the universities? Is that a decade, decades, or is that shorter than that away in some form? I would think it's a ways because they're, that's like a third rail they don't want to deal with. Um, but the way things move so quickly, I'm not sure. It's, it's certainly possible. One thing they really need to do, and I, again, I don't think it's probably likely, but we need to have a, a, a situation in college athletics where we're talking about football, and then we're talking about everyone else, maybe men's and women's basketball. But football, you can make the case they should be employees. I may not agree with it, but you can make that case. But when you sit there and say, okay, Pittsburgh Steelers have a football team, but they don't also have 23 other teams with, <laughs> with a bunch of people right. who are an employee, right? It, it just doesn't make any sense. Just be like, well, we now have to make sure that our rifle team are employees. And you know, well, that's not really the point of this, right? Um, or our, our crew team or our softball or whatever it is. So you wish you could do that. Um, my guess is, yeah, the push for employees will be, will be a thing. I will say that in some ways, um, I prefer they don't become employees. I prefer that they just, we just let the open market with NIL go and, you know, the market will hash itself out. I'm more of a free market person. I mm-hmm. understand that not that many people are that anymore, but that's just my thing. But I will say, if they, if, if I'm a, if I'm a, an AD, it might be easier to have them be employees and part of a union. And I say that, and I know when you say the, the players will be in a union, people just like it's a visceral reaction, like, oh no. A union is only as powerful as its ability to strike, cause a work stoppage. And without the ability to cause a work stoppage, it has almost no leverage at all. In anything it does. And so a union can work when it's, you know, one, uh, you know, a, a Chevy plant in Ohio in one town, and you get all the people to say, look, we want five bucks more an hour, we're going to strike. And those people have a lot of commonality. They live with each other. They, they go to church with each other. Kids play baseball together. Everyone's making the same amount. They're very similar. And then it's still hard to get somebody to strike. A college football union would never be able to pull off a strike. You're talking 12,000 people all over the country, all sorts of different things, all sorts of different interests. Some kids will be like, good, you guys go on strike. I'll get to play now. I'm not following my teammates. Like, you would never be able to get any solidarity. This would be the weakest union. You, how are you getting, how are you, getting um, you know, I don't know, any, how are you getting J.J. McCarthy at Michigan to go on a strike right now. This kid lived his whole life to be the, I'm going to be the starting quarterback. We go in the national, but they didn't strike it. So I think that a union would be extremely weak and it would actually make it very easy for the schools to get this under control and be like, this is what I'm dealing with. But the schools are a hundred percent hesitant on any of that. I just, I don't think if they do go that route, it would be that bad. Um, but I would, pref- but I understand why schools don't want to do it. Let's talk ACC for a minute, Dan. There's chaos in that league as well. Florida State making some extreme noise inside the house that they need more money, they need unequal revenue share, they're going to leave. What ultimately happens here short-term and then long-term within the ACC? Uh, You know, it seems like this grant of rights that runs through 2036 is airtight because if Florida State could get out of the grant of rights, it would get out of the grant of rights. And we have not seen it get out of the ground. Right? So it's sort of like, hey, we want to leave. We're going to get out. Like, they would just do it. Um, so I think there is stability. 
for the near term. And there really aren't any other television properties out there that are going to cause either the Big Ten or the SEC to try to expand. The SEC is quite happy where they are. They just added Texas and Oklahoma. Their league makes sense geographically, culturally. Um, they win all the titles. They've got plenty of money. They're not really scared. Now, if they could get a shot at North Carolina, Clemson, or Florida State, or Notre Dame, um, that might be different. If North Carolina was all of a sudden free because the ACC blew up and could get Notre Dame and North Carolina, the yes, SEC would probably go to 18. But until some of those schools are available or interested, and Notre Dame isn't until it absolutely has to, um, I don't see anything going on there. So I think the ACC is pretty solid. But at some point, Florida State, something has to happen in the ACC to make Florida State or Clemson or whatever, any of these schools, say, this is where I want to be. This, this makes sense. And I don't know how you get there, especially as year after year, the money differential um, – stacks up and 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 obviously the ad's are very concerned about the money uh i'm less concerned i think you can win with less money I, um we've seen it uh over and over certain cultures of a team and, and where your geography and like you know cincinnati's had a great run the last 10 years indiana has not indiana's got way more money than cincinnati but cincinnati won wow they had a great coach and they did you know um one year, Cincinnati had eight NFL draft picks in the, what, one year, right? How'd they do that? It wasn't because they had a ton of money. It's because they identified, you know, soft Gardner from Detroit to became the best cornerback in, in football, you know. So there's other ways to win than just money, but I, the, the ADs are, are obsessed with it. So they're, they're uh, I, I don't I guess a long answer there. I don't know if I answered it, but I think there's stability for now, but long term, they got to figure some way to make Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina, and those places want to stay. Great insight, man. Uh, we really appreciate your time. I'm going to let you uh, let you slide. We want you to know that you're in our uh, triumvirate of those to follow. As you know, Dan, uh, conference affiliation stories are uh, trying to like uh, follow a snake, right? You just can't get your hands on it. But you are one of the three that we recommend. We go, we go Wetzel. Thamel, 40, if you want to believe it. Well, Ross, Dellinger. We'll Ross, Ross yeah, Ross, I guess Ross, Ross, would be, Ross would be a player to be named later. Is that what you would go with? Well, right no, he's right in. in. Yep. He's right in. Yeah, he's right Hold in. Hold on. Can I, can I get some clarification from Wetzel? Because you make me nuts with this. Yeah. You, you have ceased calling it conference realignment, and I don't know why. You call it conference affiliation. I've started calling it conference consolidation. Dan, what do you refer to this whole thing as? A disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Conference disaster. That's better. That's more to the point. I don't know. It's definitely not realignment. Yeah, I think it's heading towards consolidation. That's what I think. question, because yeah. we keep losing. I mean, we had six. Let me give you one hopeful thing. Okay, let me give you one hopeful thing. And I've obviously had me on for death and BCS you know, whenever that was a while ago. But I've always thought once they get this playoff going and people see the value of that automatic bid, and the money that can be generated by getting in the playoff, competing every year for a playoff, having an exciting team, late November games that have playoff implications, that some of that can counteract the television money. Agree. So Clemson, or take Florida State. Florida State has a chance this year to win the ACC, and in a year from now they'll be in the playoff. Every year they could line up and say, you know what, we've got a pretty good chance of winning, winning this league and we can get to the playoff, and we're playing late November games that matter. We're going to sell out, and we might get a home game on our campus in Tallahassee. This is fantastic. We can make a lot of money through boosters and, and T-shirts and parking and all this stuff. And he said, well, you should go to the SEC and go, gosh, if I go to the SEC, we're never winning it. Um, maybe, maybe Oregon's a better example, or, or Washington. Like, are you really going to get in the top four of the uh, Big Ten? Right. Because – Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, and USC are kind of, you know, three out of three out of four of them are going to be good every year. So what are your – well, if you had stayed in the Pac-12, especially at how with USC gone, you're, you're going to make the playoff like two out every four years, three out – you know, and you're always going to be in it. So I do hope this playoff provides some stability. Like I would, I would think for a West Virginia, you can win the Big 12 or you can come in second and make a playoff if you get all your ducks in the line. If somehow West Virginia got in the SEC, 
or, yeah. or the Big Ten. Great point. Never. Absolutely. It's a steep climb. Total, you know, totally agree. Gonzaga's really happy where they're at. Like Gonzaga, they play basketball in the West Coast Conference, and they're quite content because they, they can recruit lottery picks and they can make the Final Four, and they're a big deal. It, had they ever jumped to the Pac-12, I don't know if it would work that well. Totally agree with you, but here's the concern, and you're already starting to see it. Greg Sankey wants – 14 to the 12 spots to go to the SEC. <laughs> They're already wanting to change the formula, Dan. We haven't even got to the playoffs yet, and there's already talk about well, changing the damn thing. Absolutely. But let's. Greg Sankey came up with this plan with, with Notre Dame and the Big 12 and the Mountain West, and he put out, they were willing to agree to like a 10 or 12 year deal, 12 teams, six automatic bids, six conference champions. And everyone was mad at Greg Sankey and the SEC for taking Texas and Oklahoma, which every league would have done. And if you didn't take Texas and Oklahoma, you, would, you should be fired as a commissioner. And the ACC, the Big Ten, and the Pac-12 decided to form the alliance and got all mad, and they all rejected the playoff plan. Now, obviously, so West Virginia loses out on that. But, like, there would have been six six spots right now if they had just agreed to that plan the acc pac 12 have ways to shoot themselves in the foot that are just mine I, I was screaming take the deal this is the this is the stabilizer and uh, well already we're down to five but i will say if you're the big you're in the big 12 like west virginia okay there's five you either win the league but if you may come in second you know maybe you can uh you can get in there um you got to have those five automatic pins. You cannot let – if it's just 12 at large, then there's problems. Yeah, like yes. This yes. has to be the death line. Yep. If you don't have access to the championship, you're, you're cooked. Yes. You're cooked. And, and so as a, and as a sport. So if I'm the Big 12, the ACC, anybody left, I am, that is the number one priority right now is, is getting the Big 10 and the SEC to long-term agree to – five automatic bids outstanding hey man really appreciate it uh, dan wetzel college football inquirer follow him on yahoo sports uh, as he said he was uh, he's at front and center of breaking these stories we didn't even i mean I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier when you when we first chatted that kerchival over here and thamel have been in, a, in an absolute death blow struggle as to who's going to beat who on these certain stories that unfortunately developed in west virginia uh this yeah. off season and uh, Hoppy's held his own. Hoppy, are you scoring at 2-2? Two, Hoppy, 2-2 two? Hoppy, yeah. two, two at this point? Uh, it's 2-2 two, two right now. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to, yes, Dan. 2-2, two, 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 but number one in our hearts. Well, number thank one you, Dan. Heart. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank, thank you very yeah. much. Take, take, take Pete down. Take Pete down. No, <laughs> um, no Hoppy had some huge stories. Can we, like, that is, Hoppy's stories were like, you're like, wait. This can't be true. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, no. If it wasn't what, 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 him, what? I'd be like, there's no way this is a true story. And then I'm like, wow. He's reporting? Like, oh, look at this letter. Oh, my God. I don't – I I, I, I would people. hope. I, I don't want to – I really don't want to put out untrue stories. <laughs> no, I know. But it's my story, career. It was, it's it, not like – it's not <laughs> like, okay, uh, I don't know. So-and-so is going to be the next coach at this school. Like, okay, it makes sense. Probably have – like, I mean – some of those stories were like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that today. Yeah. No, well, was neither was I. Yeah. yeah, that was yeah. A, yeah, weird year. Thanks, Dan. All right, my man. Be good. Thank you so much. Again, yeah. Dan Wetzel, Anytime, College guys. Football Inquirer. Thank Be good. You, Thanks so Thanks, much, Dan. Dan. Appreciate it. You know what? I tell you, he really, and Brad, you guys, you talk about this a lot. I mean, he really just nailed it unequivocally. Like, television is making these calls. Television wants attractions. Television wants eyeballs. I mean, that's that's what this is all about. Nobody cares. You know, do you think anybody with ESPN, like you said, or or uh, Fox says, you know, the old oaken bucket, they're going to battle for that. So it's just, I mean, the people at, at Indiana and Purdue care. That's, they care. That's where it's gotten out of. That's where it's gotten out of whack. Those few TV executives in the room setting up the games that he talked about have overwhelmed yes. the the yes. vast majority of everybody else around it that says no. We like the Floyd of Rosedale with Iowa Minnesota. <laughs> you may not be watching that in, in New York, but they're watching that. That matters. That Oregon State, that hundred and fifty three yeah. million dollar stadium renovation. Now, what are they doing? They're sitting there holding those. Well, and nobody, here's those payments. Television, they don't care. They don't care. And at some point. Because they're under pressure too. At some point, though, the schools are going to have to take that back. Now, what allows that to happen? What AD has the juice? 
what president has the juice to take less money? You you can't in this environment. That's what that's why. I've so said. that's why they're obsessed with the dollars and they have to chase the dollars and they have to take the dollars. But it it really is hurting the football side of it in particular from rivalries and the rest of the sports in totality. That's why I said and and I, I know that when you talk about government involvement, people start to start to get freaked out. But I think it, seriously, if you're Oregon State and 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 there was testimony before a you know a, a, a panel of Congress, a committee, and you have television executives under oath, and you're asking a television executive, do you realize that the decision you made is leaving Oregon State 150 million dollars in debt? Are you aware of that? Are you aware that that action, what that has done to them? I mean, I think there's got. I don't see how this is sustainable. Well, I'll do respect. I mean, you live in that world every day. How's that world going? Is there a lot of consensus building in that world? Uh, there are all the hearings that are going on, those those accomplishing a lot? Yeah. Federal government got involved in the paying for basketball recruits. How'd that work out? Yeah. They, have teeth, well. they have any well, teeth guess, in that? I, they I, got involved? That do anything? Well, I guess I'm just saying that I don't see how this continues this way. Well, I don't either. I don't know that you have the – I don't know that the Congress is the answer. They've got to – I'm kind of with Dan on that. They've got to show me they're the answer to something before I think they're the answer to anything. All, right. all due respect to them. Dan said you made a good point. Mm-hmm. I mean, he said you made a good point, and, and but to his point as well – could you see Congress slapping ESPN or Fox for doing or being involved? Like he said, they're private. Co- they're private companies. They, well, they but Congress can do anything at once. If you call, I mean, they they call up the auto executives. They call up pri- all the time and get them to testify. I'm saying it gets their atten- it would get their attention. Why aren't the Oregon politicians standing on their head until Oregon doesn't leave? Well, I I, I don't Why know. Anybody, I, haven't, I haven't followed that, so I, I don't I know whether they're everybody there just says, well, okay, they're gonna, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. We're good. I mean, re- remember when— I mean, when- shouldn't it start there? If, if politics was going to be the answer, shouldn't it have started in Oregon or Washington politics? Yeah. Or in yeah, California yeah. politics to let USC and UCLA walk out? Nobody's done anything there. It used to be a threat. You know, when Virginia Tech got into the ACC, it was because politicians in Virginia said, hey, Virginia, UVA, you're taking Tech. What? That's what? gone away. Look at Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Like Oklahoma said, see ya, we're going to the SEC. Nothing. That was it. Well, remember Mitch McConnell and Joe Manchin butted heads Absolutely. on the whole Big 12 thing. Absolutely. So, look, I, I, I don't know. I was just speculating. It's no. just, it just I, I don't see how this keeps going this way, leaving so many schools, as I've said, the powerful, the less powerful, and the powerless, because the number of, the number of powerless schools is growing. Okay, this is easy for me to say because it's not West Virginia related, and I would have a totally different slant if this West Virginia was on the, on the burner here, front burner. But if you're Washington State and Oregon State, and you end up, let's say you end up in a Mountain West, a configuration of the Mountain West, and it combines, which becomes an easier league to win for them, correct? correct? Mm-hmm. If you get that college football playoff, those automatic berths coming through, Oregon State could survive this because they go into a league that they can now win and compete it more evenly, get to a couple of playoffs out of that league, and now they're right in the hunt. I think that's the way to survive that's this. What his, that was his point at the end there. Like, hey, Clemson and Florida or Florida State, like, just shush. Win your league. You'll make your money. You'll be totally fine. Okay, but you're the, not going to. The access in, and, and I'm with him there. You've heard me say this before the, the 12 team came about. I kept saying that from a West Virginia perspective is that's what you need. West Virginia is going to have trouble getting to a four-team playoff. But 12 and an automatic berth out of the league? Okay, now you've got a real chance, or at least deeper into the season being around it. Washington State and Oregon State, theoretically, if that happens and that league keeps an automatic berth, they might still be in the mix there. The word is access. All we want as fans is access. If we have no access, if there's a dead end that we're driving down, we're out. We don't want it. If there's a glimmer of hope that I have that opportunity, that's what I want to be in. And so, if the if the TV networks want to take those top matchups and put them together, fine. But the sport on a regional basis can exist with some of those smaller conferences that are getting left out if they have access for their winner. They get in. A, they get a ticket to the postseason party. They're in. Yes. That. And then it becomes NCAA tournament esque. And I know everybody's screaming, saying, "Well, what good does that do? Oregon State's not going to win the national title." Okay. It happens every March. NCAA back yeah, exactly. Every San March. Diego State were they in the Final Four this year? Yeah. Florida Atlantic, were they in the Final Four this year? Yeah, because every year they start the season and they know they've got an opportunity. That to, me, to, that to me is the way out of this mess for the school that still has to take the big money from the TV networks and has no choice, but you can preserve some of, you can preserve more teams being able to play the sport. 
which I think is what all the ADs should be worried about. The consolidation's really hurting. Right now, at Burdett Camping, all 2022 fifth wheels are $3,000 under the invoice. Do not adjust your earbuds. I said $3,000 under invoice on all 2022 fifth wheels, plus that fantastic $10,000 off on the Forest River Travel Trailer. $10,000 off. Check it out. Go to their website at BurdettCamping.com. Three guys also brought to us by Comax Business Systems. Many of their first clients, 25-plus years in business, are still their clients today. They will walk hand-in-hand, become your partner, whether it's business equipment, whether it's managing your IT in your business, or remote monitoring of your systems, plus their digital phone systems, from one line to a 1,000 lines. They got you covered. They'll come in do a free consultation to see what you need as far as your IT goes. Are you safe? Are you safe? You think you're safe, but you're not safe when you're no longer safe. But think about it. If you just think you can go like, nah, don't worry about it. No one's going to come in here and try to get our stuff. That's the day they come in and get your stuff. Check them out at comaxwv.com. Mountaineer football team took yesterday off practice today. Today's Monday, for those of you that might be listening later. And school starts on the 16th. That's Wednesday. They're going to keep going with their 10 a.m. practices, as we said last week. So camp kind of still keeps going. They scrimmaged under the lights Saturday night. Had to move it. They were going to go 7.30. They were going to go 7.30. Weather, probably. Right. right. They were worried, concerned. And it was bad. It was a bad, it was a bad storm. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was it water was coming in my house. Huh? Excuse me? Yeah. It did? Yeah. Through the retaining wall? <laughs> no, just, I don't know. You're sitting there and it's storming like crazy. All of a sudden you look up and water's coming through the window. You go, oh my gosh. Well, did you have the window shut? Oh. It's always the details. You forgot something. It's yeah. always the details. It's always the details in life. Um, yeah, so now they're pretty much, they got the tape from Saturday night. Now we're going to get it to, okay, here's the, here's the two guys here. Here's the two guys here. We're working with you guys. Let's... At some point, you got to make a call, right? Had a shocking, uh, shocking, what? I tell you, a shocking um, thing happened Friday. I was here in town, standing in a parking lot. Vehicle goes I mean, by me. Parking lot, as the office Vehicle does. comes <laughs> zipping by me. Pretty nice. All right, that was suburban expedition, whatever it was. <laughs> Guy looks through the window at me in the passenger side, and I recognize him. He recognizes me, and he waves. Jawan Sider. Current, really? uh, current assistant coach at Penn State up oh. there up there in State College. And I thought, wait a minute. I thought, wait a minute. No, no, there's no no way. Would, there's, it, no. Okay, now you got Kerchival, his investigative genes all up. Now he's no, going to be We have an investigative reporter here from the Daily <laughs> yeah, Athenaeum. Yeah. I wish he could get on yeah, this. Yeah. Why well, is no, there a I Penn said, State assistant coach in town? Yeah, uh, what's he doing in I town? I saw later in the day, a move-in day, daughter enrolling as a freshman here at the university. State Land Grant Institution. Oh. Right? She grew up a good chunk here. So she's coming to school here. You but it th- did blow me out. I went like, wait a second. Heading toward the state. What? Where are you going? Where you- Juwan, what's going on here? So um, ran into a former Mountaineer, Tim Agee, over the weekend as well. He's a, He was a dude. He was a dude. And the over-under on games he would play in the course of a season <laughs> with the new um, targeting rule? Oh. Two. Yeah. Figured he'd play two games in a year. Because there'd, be a, there'd be a game, then there'd be a six-game suspension, <laughs> then there'd be, he'd play game seven, then they'd just call it the rest of the season. He did the so-called launch that is now outlawed? Yeah, Tim liked to launch? He, he liked to launch. He so was one of the hardest right, hitters. hit you in the face? Hit you right in the face. I mean, he, he administered pain. You know how I knew, and still to this day, he he just like that's just the way he is. So I was sitting there. Jed Drenning was there with me, and Jed said, uh, "We said, you know, the targeting rule really went into effect because of a West Virginia player, Carl Joseph, oh. when he absolutely detonated on D.D. Westbrook of Oklahoma on that sideline." And you know, Jed. So Jed like takes that. Goes, "Yeah, it's right here. You ever seen it? You ever seen it, Tim?" So like, Ag's watching this, and he's looking at it, and he's watching. And he goes. Like someone who just found like a really super nice bottle of wine, he goes like, 
oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's when you know. Like that's when you know you go like, and like he just kept watching. Oh, that's really really nice. He was. He really liked it. And, and then, he was he was a guy. I know Tony. He was a walk on. He I think he played quarterback maybe at Maryland. He was a Maryland walk on somewhere. punter to this program and came in. They needed a D back. And here's a guy who goes into the NFL. He um. He had a big, you know, I have these fragments of memories, Brad. They're not, they're not all real linked together real well. I think West Virginia might have been trailing Maryland 14 nothing, and he had a big interception, Tony. Uh, uh, he, see, he, was just, he just that, predated me. He just okay. predated me. But they, they, he That's, knocked a guy out from Maryland, knocked her tight on, a 260-pound tight end. They happened, oh. He happened to have that on his camera, too, <laughs> on his phone. He was like, yeah, did you see this one? I went like, ooh. ooh. Number 44? Number 44, maybe? See, Brad, why do I? They're just little bits, bits and pieces. pieces. Just be. bits and pieces. I got to yeah, check that. that. That could be. Chris Pecom was also there. And it takes Chris about four minutes into a, any conversation for him to let you know that he scored three touchdowns in one game against Louisville. Did he really? Yeah, he did. And he'll, in case he'll, you he'll, tell, oh, yeah, he'll just, tell you. You just need to stay around. Just need to stay around. Andra was over there, too. Oh, my God. Andra says he can run a 4 7 40. Today? Today. I might take that today. Bets. He said, four, I said, are you still, are you still running track? He said, yeah. He said, I ran six one fifties this morning. So he's still, so thinks, he's still actively like, running. He still thinks in his head that he's one day, like someone's going to call him. Go, dolphins yeah. are going to call. Yeah. Hey, listen, Hey, Andre, either that or like us, the U S Olympic track team. Hey, look, we're looking for a guy. Yeah. I think yeah. You're looking that. for that. Somebody that third leg. I wonder why he isn't you know, like I, in senior. I buy, I buy him four, seven. I'll, I'll four, take seven. Him. I'll take it. You take four, seven. I'll take him. Right. Tony always doubts Under. Under comes through more than Tony gives him credit for. That's there true. may have been some fumble conversations as well during oh, the course. Stop. Poor Under. Just saying. Just saying. You guys ready to do a little something? Yep. Ready to do a little something? Yeah, because we're tracking towards another four-hour podcast here. I thought Wetzel was great. I don't know why you got to attack Wetzel. He was great. But we said we, said we weren't going to go as long. No, you said we shouldn't go as long. And That's I said, true. yeah, you're probably right. And we're going as long. All right, yeah. And as soon as I can find that, I mean, he's over here taking four hours to find the music. I know. I had we it before the it. show and everything. Do it! Down. Yeah. I don't think Dan Wetzel's. I don't think Dan Wetzel's podcast has a song, and they don't have a beer either. No, I'm sending him a four pack. coffee. I'm sending. No, I don't do coffee. I'm sending him a four pack of Kirchville. He'll I'm like going, that. I'm oh, that to, would be good. I'm yeah. gonna send it to him. Can you send that across state lines? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They send a lot, like, of, they send a lot like, of other stuff it's across. like you're playing for the tailgate. You know, it's creedy. Just like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Podcast shut down because host sends beer across state lines. Yeah. Three ABCA guys before shuts the game. down podcast. Three guys before the game brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. They sell family fun. Did you pontoon this weekend? Did yesterday. You did? Long day yesterday. Might have been the last hurrah for me yesterday. We stayed out a while. It was nice, right? All perfect. Yeah, it was nice. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, it was nice temperature. Beautiful. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Kids Wait. have a good time? Great. Three guys before the game brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. They sell family fun. Visit Lou Wendell Marine Sales at dot com, the premier pontoon boat dealer in the state of West Virginia. They sell Avalon pontoon boats, which are the premier pontoons. I want to get on that one. The one that for those that are watching, like that one looks like James, so James Bondish. <laughs> Like, pon- like there's a lot of pontoons that look like goofy people pontoons. Not anymore. The good, uh, that's what they look like. That you can get good. They ones. look like Lou that. Wendell, yeah, Lou Wendell has good ones. Yeah, if you want a good, they're not one- like the old. You're thinking like back in the seventies, a floating like wood crate. <laughs> yes. Right with yeah. two like lawn chairs bolted down. Lou Wendell they're doesn't have those. No, he doesn't have those. They they're sell nice. James here. I'll, I'm gonna. I know they, their tag is he's they sell. Walk in and say, "Give me the James Bond edition." It, it, yes. That's what he's about. Lou Wendell Marine right? Sales. They sell James Bond pontoon boats. Every now and then, somebody will have built their own, and it looks like. <laughs> yeah. Like, yes. Like you got a bunch of. Somebody got a bunch of two by fours. You put know, something together. You don't see like, any of those anymore. You know what? No, actually, not, yeah, but when actually when Lou Wendell came on as a sponsor, don't ask me why. 
I looked up pontoon boat, like the history of pontoon boats, and it was some jack legs putting like just like crates together, right? And like with big, uh, you know, something that would float, and they just went down. That's how pontoons started. Yeah, but those lawn chairs. Remember the the long ones you could yes. lay on that had like the rub. They were almost like rubber pieces that stretched across. <laughs> Remember those, Kirchhoff? Well, that's right in your wheelhouse. That is. <laughs> you know that material I'm talking about? Those, yeah, like those yeah. tubes of rubber that went across. Yeah, then they break. And sometimes and they when they get older, like you kind of go down in between down them. And there's a problem. They don't make those no, anymore. No, no, Two no. hours and 20 minutes before the Mountaineers start their football games, they will come to the stadium. It's called the Mountaineer Man Trip. It's a nod to the state's proud coal industry and its heritage. It starts off with the team drop-off. You can walk into the stadium with the Mountaineers as part of the man trip. You'll also win tickets to the game and opportunity to be on the field when the team comes out of the tunnel. All you have to do to sign up to become a contestant is go to GoMart, GoMart.com. That's GoMart.com. Sign up right there and uh, make sure you get a rewards card so you can save money and things like that. Um, there was a while, a bit ago, Hoppy thought he was confused, which isn't anything new, uh, about this program, whether or not the program aired live <laughs> or not. And we... we delicately and subtly told him that no actually this is a show that goes to tape and then immediately it is put out as a Lots podcast the point of being live is we do have two live studio guests yes. with us um here during our taping today it's matthew jones and savannah jones father daughter she's a sophomore journalism student here at the college uptown mm -hmm. and uh right to the, the da it the DA. works just like you did right yes, yeah it just like writes for the da investigative reporter kind of like he's not doing a piece today <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> three, three guys before the game it's a What's fraud it's story? a scam you should see what happens behind the scenes before they start recording exactly. but so uh her dad matthew um made a donation to a local charity that's why they're here but he's a p1 listener Oh, what do we got? So his wife, Matthew, what's your wife's first name? Kathy. Kathy. We love Kathy. Um, I mean, Matthew and Savannah came, and so did this little item. It's got, by the way, marker says three guys. Oh, Lord, if you oh, can smell nice. these, folks. These look good. Oh. So these are Rice Krispies treats, peanut butter, chocolate, some form of nut as well. What else is in there? Butters. Butterscotch. Oh. That's what. The, that's what gives. Nice you the, twist. That's yeah, a good perfect. twist. Yeah. Well done. Uh, my gracious. So thank you so much. Yes. These thank are you. these are uh, just absolutely terrific, Senator. You can imbibe. I, I'm going in shortly. Left. So so hurry up. Start the text. Thank text. You. <clears throat> Jackie, our producer, jumping Jack Carlson. Now he's got to go back to school soon. I know that'll be a sad day. This. Yeah. Uh, I'm wearing a he's... black armband when Jack goes <laughs> back to school. We have tried, you folks, you have no idea how much we've tried to talk him to go into the transfer portal, just come to school here, but he won't. Won't do it. Won't do it. Actually, it gets a little bit weird when you bring it up, too. It gets really uncomfortable. I yeah, like it. he's like, not comfortable Jack talking Jack gets about uncomfortable it. rarely, but I love making him uncomfortable. And uh, he gets uncomfortable when I say, why don't you come to school here? He, he's not even entertaining that he wants to no, stay here with us. Just, just looks I think he just wants to get away. It's probably Could be, and that's fine. That's fine. The other kid we had here, we we worked like heck to chase him out. It took us it took us five years to get rid of Taylor. Jack, we want him to stay. Anyway, hey Jack, fire up the uh, graphic of fan following. Um, so the, that's social media interactions on football social media accounts of the new schools in the Big 18, 16. And look at that. As far as following goes, uh, BYU. Number one, 18.2, if I'm reading that correctly. And then West Virginia, second most social media file. Isn't that amazing? 17.2 million. But I think it's, that, that speaks to the, uh, to the passion that folks have. Arizona, no one cares. Houston, no one cares. You're down to the bottom. You're 4 million people. Pretty amazing when you think about yeah. it. Thank you, Jack. Meanwhile, texter, hey, gentlemen, you can't outrun the flying WV. Recently, on a trip of a lifetime to Wyoming, Montana, Utah, my wife and I sporting our gear. <laughs> we were at Old Faithful in Yellowstone when a man from across the geyser sees us and begins to sing, Take Me Home to the Place Where I Belong. Of course, I was happy to finish the lyric for him. He was actually from Idaho, obviously knows the brand, which I'd bet a pontoon boat that doesn't happen if I'm wearing a Rutger or a Vanderbilt shirt, all due respect. He's right on that. Also, a while back, we're car shopping here in town. We're in my blue and gold. 
I hear a voice yell, let's go. I finish with my best mountaineer. As we began to talk, he tells me he sold pop at the stadium. I quickly assessed the size of his neck, being as big as my thighs, and I said, you know, I don't think you did. He smiled and said he played. I asked his name, and all he gave me was Harris. Well, there were a couple of options to go, but as I stood trying to figure it out, he smiled again, and I said, it's okay, say it, say the name. I said, KJ. Thank God I was right. We talked more, great guy. I've got more, but I'll spare you the time. Thanks for the great show. KJ Harris. KJ Harris. Thanks for the great shows. Look forward to seeing you guys at the UCF game here in South Florida. Apparently, the capital to pop selling Mountaineers everywhere, Philip and Tampa. He's still, KJ, still running at East Carolina. Oh, I crushed him. 300 and 37? 360 plus. I thought it was 337. They, they shut him down. He was all mad. I remember Rich took him out. Like he's on the sideline. Come on! He wanted four bills. Rich wouldn't do it. Texter, Charlie from Midlothian. Since all we talk about is conference realignment, here's breaking news. There you go. Dallas Cowboys into the Big 12 Conference. Thank you very much. Will Gurr had some nice throws on Saturday. Yeah, he did. He so like did. like 16 of 22, Brandon. Yeah, a little bit better than that, yeah. Was it? Yeah, he was, yeah. Yeah. Is he number two then? You know who played well for the Cowboys? Deuce Vaughn. Oh, did he? Deuce Vaughn played really well. Texter, hey, three guys, Paul from Tampa. When you had Ren Baker on, he made a very insightful comment about evaluating Neil Brown at year's end. Did we play disciplined football? I hear you three guys discussing how we were so close to winning two more football games, but then you went on to reveal the undisciplined football that caused us to lose. I think Ren gets it. We'll continue to waller in mediocrity until our team plays 60 minutes of disciplined football every week. That has been Brown's Achilles heel since he's been in Morgantown. No matter what he has tried, his teams cannot put together 60 minutes, even in the most vic- even in most victories. I hope He's figured it out because he seems like a great fit. Otherwise, I mean, who does not like Neil Brown? Speaking of weird things yeah. sticking in your head, I was KJ Harris. I was right, three thirty-seven. Well, now well why done. is that taking up space in my brain? It, it is, and it's there forever, <laughs> forever. You'll be on your deathbed. Would you, you know, have, KJ Harris at three thirty-seven? What'd you have for dinner Saturday night? Quick. Doesn't matter. Doesn't See, remember. Three thirty-seven. Doesn't matter. KJ Harris at yeah, three thirty-seven. Yeah. By the way, it's you know that's that's often said. I think of what coaches say: got to play sixty minutes of football, got to play every play. Brad, you don't. I mean, realistically, you don't. Okay, that doesn't happen. You're going to make mistakes. You just want to make fewer mistakes than the other team, right? And you want to just have just a couple less mistakes. That's all. You don't have to be mistake free. Just make a few less mistakes. Fair. Fair. What did you? Tony just killed. We Tony need. Just we, went, we need to. He, he, you did, Kathy, not, you did not think that out. Kathy, you couldn't stand yourself. I couldn't stand it, but I got it done. You guys were talking. I chewed. Kathy Jones, first team all conference. Official Rice Krispie treat of three guys before Pretty the good. game. I'm going in shortly. All right, Pretty go. good. Hit it. Texter, Tony, the better passer will eventually emerge as a starter. Tony, where does this leave all the other sports at these schools? Tony, there is a gallon limit on the gas. So this person just had three random thoughts they tried to put together. <laughs> Charlie from Midlothian's out there filling tanker trucks full of gas with his Kroger points card. Uh, as Dan Wetzel just said, where does this leave all the other sports at these schools? Scrambling. Scrambling and not in a good position. The better passer will eventually emerge as the starter. I disagree. A quarterback who makes the fewest mistakes and can make the biggest plays will become the starter. Yeah, it helps if you throw it. Texter, Garrett in Alaska. Hello! <laughs> Haven't checked in with you guys for a bit. Snapped my humorous there and had goes. surgery a few... Did you hear what I said? Uh-uh. I'm sorry. He snapped his humorous and had surgery a few weeks ago. Someone you could understand with. You yeah. had to have major orthopedic surgery this summer. How good are those? Awesome. Yeah. Keep talking. Just wondering who I should talk to about getting the University of Alaska Anchorage Seawolves <laughs> and the University of Alaska Fairbanks Nanooks into the Big 12. Figure if four time zones is good, whatever nonsense they do out in Arizona, why not go five with Alaska standard time? Thanks, as always, for the show. Glad we're back to two a week. P.S. Sunset is still after 10 p.m. here, which means it's still summer, T.C. Wow. It is getting darker quicker. You ever been to Alaska, Tony? Never have. I'd love to. Texter, hey, three guys, this is the basketball nana. I just have a question. Why was Omar Silverio's request for a waiver denied? I think the shortest answer would be because academically he had not graduated. 
And, uh, and the NCAA decided to enforce a rule. Yeah. <laughs> The big ones. We're going to take a stand on this. I tell you, only the third time. The Perez big... gets next, some receiver down at Carolina, and now Severia. <laughs> I'm telling you this. I got you only three. The big one. Wrong. The big one's coming. What's the Ra- the Raekwon battle one. That's going to be the one that's going to be a real under the belt shot if that does not get approved. Yeah. They need him. Yeah. Texter. I want to start off by saying I love Neil Brown as a person. I'll add in here now. Here comes a heater. And I'm wishing him well this season. Just wondering if the season does unfortunately start out rocky. Is he gone mid-season for contract reasons, or would he stay all year long? Also, if he does go, who is a candidate? Would West Virginia welcome Jimbo Fisher if he gets let go at A&M? It's, it, I think Ren Baker, what we've know, come to know about him, I think he's a very, very deliberate guy. I think he's playing chess. I don't think he's playing checkers. I think he's thought about various scenarios Brad throughout the season but I'll tell you this if you start one and two and then that Texas Tech game looms large and you go one and three it's it's going to get really really hot texter I need you guys to let me know if I'm being a Karen or not so I ordered season tickets for football this year and it's the first year we were able to do this which is pretty exciting for us so we ordered them over the phone at the ticket office, and they asked if we wanted them by mail with the graphics on the tickets, and we said yes because we would like to keep them since it's our first time being season ticket holders. So as we're waiting, waiting to get our tickets delivered, we call the ticket office just to see if they've been sent. Come to find out, they said that we have our tickets by mobile delivery. I told them we ordered the card stock tickets with the graphics. They said, sorry, must have been misunderstood you there's nothing we can do now am i being a karen or am i rightfully super pissed about this thanks i love the show folks this question right here is exactly why brad howe is no longer in college (laughs) (laughs) athletics i was just gonna say you better not ask me my opinion on this what's your opinion i I don't have one excuse me sorry i'm sorry they didn't get their tickets like that you don't but you did what i mean I would value your expertise in such matters. Thank you, Hoppy. I think that was a well-phrased way to get him to Don't come. have any expertise in that anymore, so I got out. So basically what you're saying is you had a lot of these to deal with. Is that a no. correct statement? Uh, no. Other things. <laughs> why, did you, why did you tighten up all he's of got, a sudden? He's got he's – he's got, got, here's he, the thing. You know, if, if – when you have trauma – <laughs> he's got PT. He's got a whole different kind of PTSD. He's got a whole PTSD. And post just, ticket, post <laughs> post ticket syndrome disorder, and it's not easy for people who've been through that to go back and talk about these things publicly. Now, maybe privately, you would talk with somebody about it professionally, get some get some help with that. But I'm just, sorry that happened to them. The ticket office may not be able to go back and do it as they stated. I'm sorry that's the case. <laughs> I spent a lot of time solving issues that were unsolvable. I'm not, I got out, so I don't have to try and solve the unsolvable. I'm sorry for all involved. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers headed out to both parties. It's a very, very um, careful, thoughtful. You ever have any, uh, Brad, in your business dealings at the uh, department, any situations involving cheerleaders like pom poms, mountaineer rifle? transportation, anything like that, that still kind of maybe haunts you a little bit? Nope. It was wonderful. All easy. <laughs> no issues. Traumatized. Yeah, I hate to see. I didn't know that, Brad. He's, bl- um, he's, he's blanked it out. He has it. Got to go deep into the rest of this. You, but you can remember how many yards that K.J. Harris had. Texter, Bobby from Myrtle Beach. Imagine that. A Mountaineer fan living here, they say. Ask Hoppy. He said he was not going to count Penn State. Ask him if he's going to count the Alabama game in a couple of years. Great show you all have. When is the Alabama game? I don't know. Probably. Is it, I think it's two. Two. Is there another Big 12, I mean, another Power 5 game in the I early season? I think by then it's only Alabama, I think, is the one Power 5 that's on then there. Then I'll count that. Sean from Raleigh, North Carolina writes, Greetings, gentlemen. It's been a while since I've texted. Only one thing to do is weigh in on no, Hoppy. I don't think it's necessary to say that Neil Brown's job is on the line in your promo. Everyone knows it. No, it's not your job to be the cheerleader, but let's support the players. It's all up to them anyway. Will you re-record if they start 7-0? and 
I personally am hoping for some positivity surrounding WVU after a rough spring and an early summer. Sean from Raleigh. Get a lot of blowback on this promo. <clears throat> Texter, why? Well, everybody knows that everybody knows you're playing Penn State too, but you 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 promote that. Everybody knows the game time, but you're promoting that. They really don't know the game time. A lot of seven thirty. A lot of people. A lot of those. They don't follow it as closely as we do. Texter, wow, that's some way to promote the opening game against Penn State. Neil Brown's job is on the line. That's pretty low, even for Lib Central Metro News. <laughs> way to sell positivity. Let's go. Not selling. Not Bobby, s- seems as you've opened up a can of worms. I'm not selling positivity. I'm not selling negativity. I'm selling a storyline, which I think is real and and exists. Texter just finished the latest episode. I have to take Spreads' side on the always under-promise and over-deliver issue. I'm sure you all can pull off the food court. Looking forward to the episode after the scrimmage, a static over the two episodes a week returning, Michael and Culloden. What's the latest on that? Efforting. Food court? Yeah. Going great. Efforting. <laughs> Has Tony are, been to a meeting? Fred? He may have had a sidebar. I did. Things are going swimmingly. <laughs> I then had a sidebar after his sidebar to go through the real things. Okay. So Eff- Tony just comes in and goes, this is going to be great, guys. Fantastic. Thanks, Tony. Looking Appreciate your time. Excellent. See you That's later. Great. Okay, I'm thanks. Here. Brad, take the details. You got it, Brad. Yeah, there we go. Did he do a Tony on you? Would you guys... I'm not going to say that now. What? No, say it. it. I'll do it afterward. Say it. No, don't. Because usually when he says it, then it's over promising something that we got to fix <laughs> on the back end. So, would you make a public appearance there? Oh, no, I'm on the spot. When? Yeah, you would. Well, we normally do it Saturdays <laughs> of the day of the game. That's you why would. it's. You the... would. Yeah. Okay. You would. He would. Awesome. Texter. Check with my spokesman. I got it. <laughs> Texter. It happened. I'm not taking any questions. We already addressed that in the meeting. (laughs) Is this your last show for this week? When do you leave? (laughs) No, I'll be here Thursday. Okay. Texter, it happened. Back in Morgantown after two years and finally got my hands on some Kerchival at the wonderful Varsity Club. Worth the wait. Great beer. One question. Have you seen or heard anything that shows any chance of a second-year jump such as Mario Alford's from Cortez Braham or Jeremiah Aaron? Uh, what was he drinking, Jack? Oh, oh, that looks icy That's cold. Good yeah, good nice. picture. I remember when we had Bill Kerlavich on, and he said, "Look at the head on that beer." <laughs> That's That's nice. That is about right. That's about right. Yeah, it's perfect. That's been very popular at the Varsity Club. They do. They have a nice glass. I think every yeah. time I've been in there, there's been multiple people drinking that. Yeah, I'll I'll answer that. Braham and Aaron, the, the small, super small sample size here, but the last practice. I was at would have been what Friday. Mm-hmm. Braham had an unbelievable one-handed catch in the back of the end zone. Beautiful catch, looked great. And Aaron the other day, Hunter and I were standing there watching, and you couldn't tell much because they weren't going against anybody. Just one of those swing passes and get up field, mm-hmm. and it turned out to be Aaron took off mm-hmm. and in the speed. Like I was like, "Whoa, hey, I'm moving, Hunter? Who's that? What dude? What numbers he with? It's Jeremiah Aaron." Okay, get him the ball in space. Small sample size there, but I understood. Texter. Two good things from both of them. Good afternoon, three guys. Brad here on Interstate 64. Did Charles Wesley Godwin have you guys fired up to run into Happy Valley like you were in the movie Braveheart, or was it just me? So so, uh, Charles spoke to the team last week, and then they put a portion of his speech to the the team on social media to get people fired up. He did a nice job. That was, yeah, a, that was a good speech. It, it was actually the unedited version was even more to get your <laughs> get your blood boiling. Yeah, he did a nice job. Yes, he did. I, I already corrected. He's not. I said Luke. It's Zach. Zach. Right. Texter, longtime fan, ear alum, but I'm a newish three guys listener. What is the background on efforting? <laughs> is it a verb, sarcasm, or is there more to the story? Fred means you're trying working on it working on it that's all we stole it did steal it stole it from dan patrick's show shorthand for working on it how are we doing on blank right and if you're actively working on it but don't have the final answer, you just say efforting how are we doing on the outside food court next to daniel's men's store for the football games efforting <clears throat> texter three guys 
Just a comment on the Pac-12 and arrogance. I read today that presidents of the Pac-12 were offered $30 million per school by ESPN after losing USC and UCLA. The Pac-12 is no more attractive and likely less attractive than the Big 12 that received a market value of $31.7 million per team. Presidents turned this down, countered with $50 million, again without USC and UCLA. That is arrogance. And that likely got what they deserved when ESPN said no thanks to the 50 mil. Uh, Stuart Mandel did a really good job in The Athletic yesterday on the 10-year demise of the Pac-12. Made a great story. Starts it with, they were at the pinnacle. And then how did it happen? And basically it's, you know, arrogance, sleeping at the wheel and not taking a deal. And then Big 12 jumping in front of them. And, you know, that's it. Chris from Marietta writes, Looking at the depth of the running backs and a somewhat unproven receiving core, it seems that defenses are going to load the box and cover zero and use a lot of man press. Getting a guy that can take the top off the defense is absolutely necessary as well as a quarterback that can make the throw 50% of the time. Also, Shelton Gibson was probably the last guy that we had that could do that. Well, Chris, tell you what, buddy. You gave us the uh, you gave us the football soap uh, dictionary there. Let's see, we got load the box, cover zero, take the top off the defense. Bing, bing, bing. That's a winner. And he's right. And he's yeah. right. We've talked about it many times. EJ Horton is a guy that's, you know, I'm I'm pulling. You know, some of those bracketologists when they go on TV when the the field of 64 is getting ready to be announced and they have like 83 teams in everybody yeah, should get yeah. in that's how I am with my top five most important players this year <laughs> I've got like 10 jammed in the top five <laughs> EJ Horton's way up there guys he's got to be the speed guy Are you in another one no it's the same one I'm finishing it oh. he's got to be able to get deep they've got to get him the ball and loosen that defense up absolutely agree with Chris sir get deep win one-on-one battles he Cuts makes Chris makes mention from uh, Shelton Gibson the the great thing Shelton Gibson was the best over-the-shoulder receiver I've ever seen. Really? I think. When you say Brett? Yeah. He was I mean, that was his absolute elite yeah. skill set of the ball coming in. and just, But in order to do that, it has That's, to come in. Yeah. As Bobby Bowden would say, now, in order to catch it that way, Brad, it has to come in that way. Now, you have got to be able to throw it. Yeah. So that's now, the thing. Now, if you can throw it and you can catch it, Hop. <laughs> I do think Garrett has an opportunity to put that ball long and deep. You got you know. I do. Texter, I love your show. Question, comment from diehard Navy and Mountaineer fan from Beckley. I'm a Naval Academy grad. Ooh, I mean, that person's smart. We hear about our big line being a strength, our depth in the backfield, right? We need a pass threat in the quarterback position, I believe. If Neil's going to make Green the man, everyone is going to put everything and the sink in the box. We may as well line up in triple option, option just like my alma mater. Start, signed by a frustrated West Virginia naval aviator. A um, little bit late for that. Uh, that's not something you can just kind of put in. They, I mean, they know that though. That Garrett sat right in this exact chair, and when we said, "What do you, what do you work on? What do you need to work?" He said, "I need to be able to throw the ball if I have to throw the ball to win." They know that. Yeah. That's coming. Hey, Hoppy, read. I, I can't read that. Read the beginning there. Are you following? Uh, I, I is that is that Spanish? Yeah, it's Spanish. I thought you. I mean, you've traveled Juego. all over the world. Uh, hey, Trey Chicos antes de, de juego? juego de juego. Hey, Trey Chicos antes del juego. Is that like hey three guys before the game? Oh, yeah, that's I probably guess what so. it is. Gosh, I'm hey, Trey Chicos antes del juego. Juego. With Hopper's Donner Party analogy for conference realignment, let's not forget that those ill-fated pioneers endeavored to make the same trip that future Big Ten members will be undertaking on a regular basis, Midwest to West Coast. Perhaps that's a good perspective to take when we complain about increased travel from these realignment moves. We've gone from the journey, maybe ending with drawing straws and eating grandpa, to not good enough peanut butter to chocolate ratio in our in-flight snacks. In fact, in honor of the conference's new geography, I propose that the Big Ten sponsor a new sport, Donner Ball. Student athletes start in the spring at Rutgers campus with a covered wagon and some basic hand tools and race to arrive at UCLA's campus without using any highways or modern amenities. Points are deducted for every member of the party that gets eaten along the way. Since TV viewership is driving this whole thing, I'm sure the live stream of Maryland's team debating which teammate is next will get killer ratings. 
Thanks again for all you fellas do, Derek in Oregon. So he took your and, yeah and built on it. Yeah. Went a different way. Yeah. Texter. <laughs> Logan from Green, Green, Greenbrier County, the state fair is in for the week. And I went a few days this past week, and I definitely saw and felt not only a West Virginia connection, but a three guys connection. On Friday, I went and saw Grammy winner Nelly during the concert. He performed a cover of Sexual Healing. <laughs> but the whole time I'm singing Textual Healing. On Saturday, I went with my dad. We walked around a few hours, and we got to talk to the Mountaineer mascot and even try out the new hit coffee oh. that was even served a few weeks back. So the uh, Mountain Table people are serving at coffee the at fair. the state fair. Well, Excellent. We made it to the state fair, dog. Excellent. Well done. On our way home, none other than Sweet Caroline played on the radio. We sang the clean version, but just a good day for both of us. Thanks for all you guys do. Texter, hello, three guys. Since my last text about choosing loss combinations was a bit convoluted, I decided to take a similar approach. <laughs> Simpler approach. Which game is more important for the Mountaineers to win this season, Texas Tech or Cincinnati? Texas Tech has owned Neil Brown for four years, and a couple of times they've embarrassed the years on the field. Losing to them once again would be a unbearable. I know Tech's supposed to be good this year, but I wouldn't say they're going to be elite. On the other hand, Cincinnati – as an old rival, we need to start off on the right foot in this renewed rivalry with a win. The Mountaineers are going to be seeing the Bearcats a lot going forward, so it would hurt to start off the new series with a loss at home. Signed by Delbert in the Adirondacks. Good one. And, that's, I, a, that's a good one. Neither. Is, both. Both. You beat them both. both. Need them both. Due to beat Texas Tech. At Texas it, Tech, it'd be a massive win. Considering where it falls. Potentially puts you at 3-1 and one, right. if you can get pit. Or right? or get you to... 1-3. and three. Well, yeah, I, think I, you're mean, gonna, I think you're going to be better than that. Um, that, would, that. That one's massive. You're due. You're due to his point. But Cincinnati's also one of those teams. You, you've got to beat them. You've got to make them take a couple years to get used to the Yes, league. yes. Both. Agreed. Texter. Hey, three guys, I'm in Morgantown for the week visiting family. Took my girls to the rail trail for some exercise. We saw none other than Boston Celtics head coach Joe Mazzula. What? I couldn't help but say hello and let him know we are rooting for him. Incredibly nice of him to take time and talk to me for a few minutes. Maybe you can get him on three guys. Hell, if he's down here at the rail trail, we probably could just go down the steps and yell, <laughs> up. Hey, up. Joe, yeah, come, JJ, here. come on up. Also pass this on my way to West Virginia. There it is. That's Penn State Stadium on his way uh, up here. Let's go. Love the show. Grant and Danville, PA. That's a, that's a, that stadium's changed a little bit through the years, oh, huh? Oh, that's a tough place to be. That's a tough place to play. That place is going to be. Let's do it. Texter, Yogi Chris, Salt Lake City. Now that BYU and Utah are in the Big 12, wearing the fly in West Virginia in the state of Utah takes on a whole new meeting. Feedback from speaking to our new member fans. BYU fans are extremely grateful to be in the Big 12. Utah fans are bitter and upset, even referring to the Big 12 as a truck stop conference. Really? I think they should be grateful to be in a conference. You three make me laugh. I love the show. Until next time, Yogi Chris in Salt Lake City. What's Utah? What, what bird do they have under their saddle? Well, I wrote back to him and I said, you should tell the BYU fans to tell the Utah fans how that independent status works, how that feels, and leave it at that. And if they want to go in, if Utah wants to be independent, since they don't want to be in the Big 12, perhaps, or they don't want to be, obviously, in what was the Pac-12, go that independent route. See how that works. I'll tell you what I, what I, you know what I told them. I said it won't be long before they'll be running to try to get into a Phillips 66. You know what's going to be weird is on game day, season's rolling along, and you're talking about not only obviously your game but also conference games you go oh BYU and Utah are playing today in an important conference matchup that's going to be weird doing some business right now what are you doing well god what are you guy doing just, guy just guy just texted me he wants he wants fine looking Phil's number well, we're still on the air <laughs> but he's a prominent well, he's, we'll do it after. No, he's, not, a, he's a prominent. No, he, he, we know who this guy is. The guy needs a suit, so I'm just gonna just send him Phil's stuff right now. Why wouldn't you do that? Well, just the guy's going in for a suit. He needs a suit. Phil takes care of those things. He does. I Phil mean, and I are on the outs, obviously, because of this promo thing. 
No, Phil's very no, no. He likes you. He listen. You're he's a P one listener. Your show is on his on his store every single day. He listens to you religiously. I mean, he gets an opinion, just like you can use yours. I mean, he he just had his. He doesn't hate you. He just made him raise an eyebrow. Is all it was. Maybe I should rethink that. Take your time and do what you want to do. So you're here Thursday. Yeah. And then see you like after the leaves come off the trees. Well, I'll I'll be uh, I'm taking a, um, a, a sabbatical. Sabbatical. Hmm. Sabbatical. Those sabbaticals are pretty good, aren't they? I'm just gonna just call it just a sabbatical. That's all. You guys, it'll be, it'll be fine. But I mean, we're gonna it'll miss be fine. It. We're gonna miss Uncle Hoppy. Yeah. I mean, you know how we kind of become attached to you. Uh, by the way, saw Nathan. More of, a, a- more of an acquired taste, but yeah, we saw Nathan Adrian this morning. Where's On he? his way out, Did you see him at the airport. No, I He's was leaving today. I was over there having coffee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> having coffee this morning, <laughs> and uh, good good. And here he comes walking in. I said, dude, when are you leaving for Italy? He said, 11 a.m. Today, yeah. He's out. Did, what team did he get with? So, I don't know the name, but it's an did hour he, east of Milan. Did he get up in the next yeah, Serie division? Yeah, he's in mm-hmm. Serie yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. He made a big boy. Yep. He's in a big boy. So, Good he's job. in he's in an hour east of Milan, and his first game is September 1. Holy cow. It's just like. He had no offseason. Just like came here, no. worked out. Did TBT, the TBT and then now back he's going to play. Yeah. Jeez. Hey, yeah. Well, we all go to work every day, right? He's a professional basketball player. Like he goes to work. Yeah, good point. He goes to work. That's okay. what they do. So yeah, hopefully he has another uh, great, great season. Um, that'll be good. So, thanks we'll, to our studio audience. What? Yeah, I was going to say that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I mean, Let Savannah, Savannah. And Matthew Jones, thank you guys very much for being here. I hope it's as stupid as you thought it was before you got here. But really, Probably we not. like you. We love your wife. I mean, that's basically, basically <laughs> those, those I mean, rice krispie treats are elite. I mean, Kathy came and Kathy kind of came in. She's so like, strong. "Yeah, Savannah and Matt are all right. Matthew are all right, but I tell you what, I'll see them and I'll give you those yeah, treats." That was, um, well done. Um, food court's going well. Uh, the, the three guys food court <laughs> continues. Continues to develop and it's going extremely well and uh, it's going to be quite a time. No people over there looking for a food court second game. Yeah. There won't be one. Yeah, and Tony won't be there. He'll be in the stadium, <laughs> just like I don't know what happened. I... Someone, hey, I thought there was going to be a food court. I don't know how the hell those guys screwed that up. I had it all set up. Some Brad did. Brad didn't sign some papers or something like that, and so the whole thing didn't happen. <sighs> Sixteen permits, <laughs> vendors, <laughs> diagrams. Diagrams. Power, water. <laughs> Porta- potable water. Tables, chairs. Three, three bunting. Sink, sink with three things. So Food, you can- <laughs> beer, hand sanitizer. There's a lot of things that do go into it. Oh, my Lawyers. Gosh. But we'll have it ready. We'll have Parking. it ready. Three Guys Before the Game is brought to us by... What day is it? It's game day. Which game? It's every game. Not for every September. game. Oh, for God's sake. Just read <laughs> the stuff. Let's just pause that. Three he guys be before the going game. Going into Daniel's going, where's, where's my food? Food beer. truck in here? <laughs> <laughs> he got uh, a pickup with a six-pack. I hope Might that. be what he did. Just see if Phil can sell <laughs> Kurtz of Ale in there. That might be just the easiest like pack. beer. <laughs> Greenbrier Dairy coming up. But that, that milkshake was sensational. Was Efforting. Three guys before the game brought to us by Burdett Camping Center. Right now, all fifth wheels, the 2022 models, all fifth wheels are $3,000 under the invoice. Sign up for the Mountaineer Man Trip. Walk into the stadium with the Mountaineers. Go to GoMart and do that. Go to GoMart.com. Three guys also brought to us by Comax Business Systems, keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years and uh, and by Lou Wendell Marine Sales they sell family fun visit Lou Wendell Marine Sales.com and get the James Bond pontoon boat goes 262 miles an hour and it has missiles on it <laughs> get it at Lou Wendell Marine <laughs> Sales just ask for that one they'll know exactly which one we're talking about all right, we're out. Cease and desist from the James Bond movie. Yeah, exactly. I, I get in trouble for one line, and you say anything. You say anything all the time and get away with it. <laughs> Why is that? That's so true, too.
That's what my wife says. My wife says, you could say anything to everybody. Just go ahead. And all the time, and you get away with it. Yeah. It's incredible. Well, maybe it's the tone that you say yours in. Maybe the tone. I'm sorry I'm not happy, like giddy all the time <laughs> about stuff. Unhappy, hoppy, the senator. <laughs> Special thank you to Dan Wetzel. He was fantastic. For the Jones crew that's in, we're out. Three guys before the game. We'll chat Thursday. See you.